just one time, bitch, think All that money get flushed in the blood Try to dribble, go give me a ring You got money, you turn out the thing I was just one time, bitch, bang Let that act now, I get with the things Feel like Ezra when I'm on the scene All these felonies they never seen Got my cup like I'm Argentine Like the second bitch, stay off my screen I'm addicted to hating on me Don't know what it takes Alright, what is going on, guys? It's 2 a.m. I'm in the shop. And obviously, I've got the door card right behind me. And I've got a whole box of goodies here. Now, I am in no shape or form sponsored by Bad Sound. Um, I have only read things online. So, everything you're getting from me about this review, about these speakers, about the install is all from somebody who purchased it with their own money, didn't get any of this for free, so just bear that in mind when I go through this whole process with you guys. Um, I've already done the passenger side door, and I've done like a sound comparison kind of by just setting the, you know, the voice and sound and all, the, all that stuff to the front, going from left to right, and it's an improvement vocal-wise and depth wise over the Harman Kardon. I also, you know, these speakers are the OEM ones that, you know, you have your tweeter right here. This is where the I main, your most your sound comes out of. It's like obviously corroded, it's seen some better days, but that the vocals are probably gonna sound way better, but as for the bass, I don't think it can get much better. Um, if you guys have a convertible like I do, I'm not sure about the coupes, but there is a sub that comes from factory in the back in the center um, where the ski bag goes through. There's actually a sub back there, which I just found out about. I don't know if it's new to you guys, but that, that was news to me when I got it. Um, so that's kind of nifty. But to take off the door card is really easy. Um, it doesn't really require too much effort, to be quite honest with you. So all you've got is this little bit of hardware. You got three long bolts, which you can't really see, but there's three long bolts, two short bolts, and you just have your mirror switch. And then you gotta pull out this little airbag cover that is over there in the corner, like rare. And then obviously you just disconnect that to the top speaker, disconnect this one to the bottom speaker, and then this is for your, uh, your switch. And then this is pretty simple. I love BMW for this. You have no idea on all the other cars I've worked on. This is awesome. I'm sure it's probably not reliable in the future, but for right now, it's awesome to me because this just pops out so you can take your door handle out. Um, everything else, you just yank it, and then it all comes out. So it's not a big, huge deal. Um, and the three holes, which, yeah, we're putting this on the hood. You got one hole there. You got one hole there, which you can't really see, but that's a, they're, they're all T20s, by the way. Then you have one hole back here. You got one hole right there. You got one hole up there. And then I would say so far, my only complaint with this entire thing is the fact that they went through all the effort to make you know, the speakers and everything work in here. I just wish that they could have somehow, they could have like 3D printed this stock style connector that they have on these speakers so you can just straight plug them in. Um, so otherwise you just like push these inside, grab some electrical tape and wrap it. It's, it's not the end of the world. That's my only complaint so far, but this is only the front. And I know that in the rear, there's a lot more to do with those mid drivers that come out so we'll see what my opinion is after that but for right now it's not bad um when i get this panel back in i'll give you guys a sound comparison something to pay attention to when you open uh when you have to go back and do the wiring and you plug these in just look on here so you have a blue and white it looks like and a blue and brown on most european cars all of the grounds are have brown so just remember that 
Anything that has, you know, whatever color in brown is normally the ground wire. Because on the other side, it was also the same. The brown wire was the ground, and then the red and blue was the positive. So positive being red, red connects to red and blue, and then the ground, black, connects to brown and black. So it would work the same exact way on the driver's side, it's just the positive color changes sometimes. So bear that in mind, you're gonna to need to do that. And they just, they go in the, they go in straight like this. When you look at the connector, it goes in straight like this. Cause I tried putting it in a horizontal, it doesn't go. You have to put it straight in like this. So I'll catch up to you guys in a few minutes. Okay, so it took me about probably an hour and 15 minutes to do both the front and rear. Um, obviously the rear is like a little bit more you know, in, intensive than the rest of it. Um, as I said, with the, the door panels, you just have those four bolts, well, five bolts, you get the three bolts on the bottom, you get the one where the SRS little airbag like little tab is, you pull that out, and then one in the door handle. Uh, you pull all those out, pull the door card off. The rear, I used a 516 ratchet or an eight mil um, ratchet, an eight mil socket, or a 516 socket, and then you just have the two bolts, which I know it's dark, but there's one right here, and there's one right here, and then you pry here, and then there's a tab right here, and obviously this will have to be moved back into place when you put it back in. There's a couple tabs on this back side here, so make sure you connect those well, but the, uh, most important part of probably why you guys watch this far or you skipped ahead, whatever the case may be. I know I didn't do an in-depth detail on how to install these, but at the same time, there are dozens of videos on this. So, I mean, if you guys really need it, I'll definitely make one. I'll just take everything back apart. It's not really hard. Um, the annoying things are like, you know, just mounting the little bracket for the speakers in the rear and then just putting the foam tape on it. But honestly, like that's not even annoying because the rear is way easier to do than the front. Um, just make sure you electrical tape all your connections. It's good practice the way they don't slip out. You have to deal with it later on. My only complaint with the rear section of everything is the same thing as the front with the wires, just the two prongs, like they could have made it a harness, whatever, fine, cool. We can get past that. But the tweeters might rattle around in there just a little bit because they have like little cones that these guys sit in i mean these are obviously pretty cheap oh they're plastic but they didn't really rattle around around but the new ones like you could take it and you could move them around and spin them i don't know if that's really going to make a difference when i'm driving but right now it's not i did turn it up was able to turn the bass up for once finally on this car um really wasn't able to do it before without the speaker sounding like crap so overall, since this is a 14-year-old car now, for, wow, actually it's a 20-year-old car now, right? 2006? Oh, 18-year-old car, I'm sorry. 18-year-old car, 18-year-old speakers. Um, it's an improvement of that. But honestly, if these were, if these were new, if these Harman Kardons were new, I feel... I don't want to say they'd feel like better, but they definitely would be pretty close because the brand new, like they're pretty expensive for brand new speakers if you were to buy them. Um, so the Harman Kardon is a good, well the Harman Kardon, the Bav Sounds is a good purchase for that reasoning, but I don't see a substantial difference over the Harman Kardon like that much at all. I mean... Maybe it's just me, but I'm used to having like a subwoofer like in my truck that's out there. I have a subwoofer in the in behind the seat, like I have Alpine type S speakers, like I've done all of that in all my vehicles before. So to get into this and then like spend 500 bucks on speakers that are plug and play, which they are, um, I was kind of expecting like a little bit more. But granted, that does have the stock amp. It does have the stock radio. This is not like the top of the line radio that you could get from factory. So that might be doing it too. Um, this only has the 
what's it like a business class one whatever it is it doesn't have the screen so it might not be as great as what you guys probably will hear but um for what it's worth the ease of insulation and everything that comes with it i think it would definitely be worth like 400 to be honest 350 400 um, obviously we all, you can, if you just on the website, you can get a discount code. It's like 15 to 15% off. So that's the only reason why I really bought them. Otherwise I was just going to do what I do with all my other E36s. I just run new wiring from the radio all the way back. And then I just skip the amp and I just run all the other regular wiring to the radio so that with radio can power the speakers. Um, that's worked every time it bypasses the amp. I get just as good sound. And then I can have a sub in the back. But I don't want to do that with this. Uh, it's really unnecessary. This is just meant to be a daily driver. Um, overall, I give them like an 8.7 out of 10. Um, because I feel like they could have they could have made a thicker speaker. Like a, a wider speaker here. Because in the rear... The rear speakers, they they have a good size magnet, they have good depth, but they shrink them down a little bit because they put the adapter plates in there, which is cool, I understand that, but you can you could probably fit a bigger speaker there. More like I mean, what's it like a this is probably like a four and a quarter maybe. I haven't looked them up online to figure out what exact size is there, but probably could have done that. But all in all really no complaints i mean they do sound good they sound pretty crisp they don't have like low end bass like some of you guys be trying to get um but that's also why you have a subwoofer in the trunk on these this is the m3 model you have a subwoofer um your subwoofer is literally right there that that box that has open and close right there that's a subwoofer well at least when you have a convertible it's a subwoofer um, the coupes and sedans and the E46 chassis have deck lid speakers back there. So that's also like where you guys would have a sub kind of same thing. Like on this car, um, they would have a sub or two, two deck lid speakers back here, plus the door speakers, plus the front door speakers, plus the tweeters in the front, because that's how they did it in the M3s. They always added extra because you're buying a luxury one, right? So... All that's said and done. Good upgrade. I still wish they had the aftermarket subwoofer they used to sell, but they don't sell it anymore. So if any of you guys have that spare and want to like sell it, well, let me know. I'll buy it. But thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more. I have way more to upload on this car because we're just restoring everything on it so I can make it to how it should have been when I bought it so I can enjoy driving it for a while. But stay tuned for more. Peace.